Okay, folks, welcome back. Uh, it's the 12th of May. It's about 15 minutes to bean time, which means 1145 in my book. <laughs> Even though I'm not going to make bean time here for a little while. All right, it's time to put the big boy pants on now. Yesterday was real fine and dandy, and I'm still... Uh, I'm still all smiles about yesterday, putting the sweet corn in and running the corn planter. I went through all that yesterday. I won't bore you anymore. Still got the smile. Uh, it's time to put the big boy pants on, though. We need to start thinking about the cattle. We need to start thinking about putting in this uh, about 19 acres worth of uh, silage corn. So, I'm out here going through the double disc now. This is the second disking. Uh, I'll, I'll give you my science here. Uh, there's a lot of F-bombs out here. That's what we're going to call them. In fact, when I go to Cultimulch's this property, I guarantee you I'm not even going to take a video because I don't care to be making videos with F-bombs on them and uh, there's going to be a lot of them. You can tell by the coloration of the dirt, the soil, excuse me, that I've already hit this area here. I got maybe not even an hour's left and I'll be done. So yeah, 19 acres. Uh, corn's obviously going in here for silage. Okay, so this is a scenario. This is probably going to be the most fertile damn ground in the county, if not maybe in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Give me a second here, I'm coming up on the headland. There we go, upsy daisy. Two seconds folks, hold on. That did work out very good. Two things at once isn't really good in my book. All right, so let me give you the scenario on this property. <clears throat> Barn manure, drier in nature, which is of course what you're seeing here. You see these clumps of uh, straw bedding? That comes from this winter. There's probably at least 40 loads plus of dry winter barn manure on here, which can play hell. And I can guarantee you there's roughly 100 loads of cow lot slop on this field as well. So I was faced with a decision with all that manure, especially this dry stuff, which is a real bugger. Low board plow it, or cultivate it deeper in nature, bring the soil up and double disc it. I opted with the route of cultivating it, bringing the soil up and double disking it uh, for a good reason. Over the last multiple years, uh, working this ground up. I've been able to basically get rid of the dead furrows. There's two of them that you can see that where they were still, but I basically worked it out of them. <laughs> the reason I opted for the way I did things here is because if not next year, the following year, the games are over for this field. Even though we're putting fertility back into it, corn sorghum, corn sorghum. Of course, it's gonna be corn this year. Actually, this is gonna be corn on corn. It was corn, no, it was sorghum last year. Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> if not next year, the following year, this is gonna be new seeding, whether a pure stand of alfalfa or an alfalfa grass mix. And I don't want to bring those dead furrows back because as we all know, unless you're perfect and you can plow, mow board plow a field with no dead furrows, we all know how frustrating it is to work grassland, you know, with valleys and bumps in it. 
Bear with me here. And I got a job to do, and I don't want to make a mistake because I'm making a video here, so just hold on. I'm getting towards the end. Uh, I'm going to do this the long way. Yes, I will put the camera out the window here in just a second. It's a very dirty windows. <clears throat> I don't want to be fighting dead furrows in a year or two from now. It's very possible sorghum might go in here next year. If that's the case, it's guaranteed to be grassland the following year. Most likely mother crop, nurse crop by a stand of peas and oats for high moisture baling. So that's the reason I opted to cultivate this and double disc it. I think it's wise but there's going to be a price to pay for it and that is uh, well number one I, I'm having to double disc it number two culti mulching this field is going to be an absolute bear uh, every minute out here I'm going to have to be feathering the uh, the hydraulics because uh, the clumps especially of that dry matter will build up in the culti mulcher and I'll have to lift it a little bit to let it pass. That's the price to be paid. So be it. So anyway, yeah, this is the second disking. Uh, I, I think it's gone pretty fair. It looks pretty stinking good. Uh, I've got all my plans made here now. Um, this afternoon I'll be picking up a buggy of uh, uh, four ton of uh, triple 19. <coughs> I'll probably be putting it down on this before chores. So I want to spend some time with the cow herd tonight plus a YouTube video and show you the calves uh, this evening. Anyway, I'm going to put down the fertilizer this evening today. Tomorrow morning I'm going after a culti mulching, which is going to be a, a, a head scratcher. F-bombs everywhere. <laughs> and I have all my rock pickers, for the most part, lined up for tomorrow evening at 5.30. I'm still waiting on a couple of calls. Uh, more the merrier. But right now I definitely have what I need to properly pick this uh, field of rocks and stones. <coughs> Once we get turned around here, I'll put you out the back window. You can take a look. All right, Ben, get your craft together here. Sorry, folks. things at once. Don't mix here. This is a bad rocky area. for a pellet gun and a 30 pack of bush light right now. <laughs> Woo. 
Ooh, that sounds like a good Friday night to me. No, I don't act my age. How do you think I stay so young looking and chipper? Huh? <laughs> so yeah, uh, the games are over. It's the big boy pants now. Uh, I don't know how else to put it. Yeah, we got F-bombs all over the place here with dry matter. Oh, that's going to be hell. I <coughs> uh, got a little issue here this morning. As always, but especially this year, one of the primary tools on the farm this year is going to be the sprayer. A lot of spraying this year. More than usual, anyway. Well, the 40-year-old <coughs> uh, Sentry, manufactured by Sentry, sprayer, the tank, garbage. Garbage, garbage, garbage. It probably should have happened five, six years ago. It lasted until now. The tank is cracked and busted. No, there was not any liquid in there over the winter and freeze. It just, it, it, it's time. So, got a lot of phone calls out there right now looking for a new tank. There's a 200 gallon on there looking to replace it with a 250 or a 300. Um, got a price right now on one that's exactly what's needed and that price is over six hundred dollars with shipping it'll probably be seven hundred bucks pretty disgusting but whatever I'm waiting on a couple calls to come in and uh, decide from there I'm going to take the long way again. Now I'll be driving all headlands. I'll be making two passes when I'm completely done. Just in case anybody's wondering. Yeah, kind of an issue to be concerned about, but I guess there's time. Actually, the, the thing, the reason it's a big problem right now, and I'm making a big deal out of it, is because there's a 13-acre field that I'm looking to till under and put uh, pure alfalfa in, and we really wanted to spray it. Uh, it depends on timeline here. A decision is being made today. It depends on the timeline of this new tank. Uh, if I don't feel it's going to be here in time and I need to abide by this beautiful, beautiful weather, then it's not going to get a spraying. Uh, it's just going to get tilled under. We'll see what happens. So. Uh, I've had three new calves here in the last 24 hours. Uh, the latest one was born early this morning. Um, beautiful, beautiful bull calf out of 468. 468 has been a long time cow on the farm. Without looking at paperwork, I can promise you it's probably her 11th, 10th or 11th calf. Nice bull calf that comes out of prime cut. Tonight it will be legitimately turned into a steer. I've got all the bulls that I need and want. I had a quota of six. I've got six. I tell you what though, I'm in a little bit of a quandary. prime cut bulls that I have that of course I can't keep they're all black baldies well this bull calf is a pure black 
comes out of a pure black Angus Mama, and of course, prime cut is a pure black Angus Bull. I'm going to sit on this and ponder this today before I go out there with uh, one of those rubber bands here this evening. And uh, unless something hairy pops up here today, I do plan on taking you out in the cow yard and having you uh, take a nice look at all the calves. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about the bull calves that are remaining bull calves. And I'll give you my little bit of science behind keeping them. Jesus. Last pass here, and then I just got to do that wedge. That wasn't quick enough, folks. Give me a second here. <coughs> so all that being said with my plans, <coughs> we're looking at putting corn in the ground here. Friday. That's about it. <laughs> Beautiful day here today. We got full glaring sunshine uh, since early this morning and will last all day today. It's supposed to get up near the uh, the higher higher end of the 60s. Um, just a, a beautiful day here today. We've got a very good outlook as well, except for Monday. Monday they're showing rain, so. Uh, getting this seed in the ground Friday and of course I have Saturday as well for a plan B if something happens uh, is a good a good deal so anyway one last look I gotta let you go got a lot on my plate here today uh, oh you better watch that rock there Whew. I had a rock sticking up like a knife you probably can't tell by this video, but this field, like almost every other field that I have, is packed with chuck full of stones. You'll get a better look at the stones here when I call to mulch it. So. Hope everybody's doing okay. The perfect plan, as I'm going to see you this evening, in the cattle yard, I can assure you there's going to be a hay friend or two, <laughs> and uh, we'll talk about calves, sires, um, we'll go from there. Everybody have a good day. <laughs>